Howdy, let's look back at some good old bad animated movies. The kind of animation that insults adults, horrifies kids, sends bad messages, or just makes you question what has gone wrong in our society for millions of dollars to be poured into such sad atrocities of nature. I mean, some of these were just fascinating disasters, truly worthy of our morbid curiosity. So let's look back at the top six worst animated movies of 2017. And as always, if you did like these movies, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion, and I'm glad if you can get something out of these movies that I couldn't. And thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Later on, I'll talk a bit about the handy new uses I've found for them. But for now, on to the countdown. For the six worst, the Nut Job 2, Nutty by Nature. A title that far better describes the producer who decided to greenlight this movie, because the original Nut Job managed a whopping 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Clearly, the producer said, hey, that means at least one person thought it was tolerable. Pour another 40 million into another one. But it isn't abysmal, and it's got a kind of fun Jackie Chan cameo, so I put it early on the list. I never thought after Bojack I could hear Will Arnett be given such underwhelming, unfunny dialogue to voice. But here it is! So the story continues from last time, that the animals are getting pretty gluttonous after they get full access to the nut shop. But then the nut shop just blows up, and the evil mayor wants to bulldoze Liberty Park. I can't very well charge children to climb trees, now can I? And in its place, build a dangerous, bad amusement park. But why would someone purposely make an amusement park dangerous? What about the lawsuits? Those don't come cheap. So clearly we need the help of Bojack Horseman's annoying incompetent squirrel cousin and Jackie Chan. Don't call me cute! What's the villain's motivation? Well, he's a bad guy and that's about it. My main problem with most of the scenes is that the jokes just don't work, and generally just fizzle out with a sad audible bzzz. You know when you get that reaction to a movie scene where you say, wait, was that meant to be the part where I laughed? With that long awkward pause from the audience after? Yeah, Nutty has a lot of those. Really predictable groaner jokes like cops like donuts. Wow, those guys are serious about donuts. What a revolutionary joke. Or surly pretending to be a woman which is just so charming to watch. Or this incredibly grating squirrel continually saying, We're all gonna die! As though it's the most original and witty line that hasn't been said in panicked movie scenes continually for the last century. We're all gonna die! And then there's Surly. I can't help but feel like Will Arnett was cringing through so many of these lines. Because Surly is just a one-note leader who's always just in over his head. And did he seriously get more than one take for these lines? Just look at this scene. Uh, uh, I know you're out there. Come and get me. Ugh. Rather than sounding like all his friends and his girlfriends have been lost forever, Mr. Arnett has all the conviction of a DMV service attendant. I know some people like this sequel, but to me anyway, these nutshot movies just always seem to carry this laziness to their writing. Even the main characters just aren't written to have any inherent charm or relatability. Even the movie's climax is underwhelming. Surly and Jackie Chan Mouse free the animals trapped in the amusement park, animals outnumber the humans and magically seize control of the park. But as I said, it's early on the list because its main problem is it's just boring with underwhelming dialogue and writing. It's forgettable and unnecessary, but an overall harmless sequel. And for number five, Deep. Oh dear, Lion's Gate is at it again. And this time they brought us the great adventure of a big yellow octopus in a post-apocalyptic world ravaged by climate change, where they have to save a suicidal whale and defeat an evil penguin. What? Well, points for originality, but no points for subtlety. What a shallow film. <laughs> Yeah. Do not disappoint me again. Think of this horribly weird combination of Finding Nemo, Little Mermaid, Land Before Time, Fallout 3, and Wally. -E. All written in this strange, dark, edgy fanfic style done by an eight year old currently obsessed with octopi. It's gonna be scary. Yes, I'm scared too. But let's press on. So Deep and his buddies are off to find the whale Nathan in order to save their colony from a fiery lava death amidst the mass apocalypse of mankind as humanity has fled the planet. I know that sounds kind of interesting, but you may find yourself more annoyed than intrigued. 
What probably stuck out to me the most is some of these jokes feel really dark for little kids. This is a boat motor. What's a boat? This is the boat! Even having scenes where characters will fool around with the skeleton bones of the dead, playing them like puppets. I don't mind the dark humour and themes, but who are they aiming this at? I thought this was for little, little kids. My favourite character, Maura the Eel, even begins digestion of all the heroes at one point, showing us the stomach acids digesting them as they fight their way out. While this is actually my favourite scene for its sheer gall and originality, it's gotta be turning a few kids' heads. Push! You can do it, Maura! It's a living! That and baby dropping jokes. Don't drop the baby. Don't drop the. <gasps> Ew. But onto these characters, and boy are they a doozy. The sidekicks are irritatingly cliche. Evo the anglerfish seems to only consist of having one personality trait, and that is being scared, with no variation throughout the movie. Alice the shrimp is a lovely singer, but mostly is just kicked around by Deep. And then we have our uh, hero Deep who was just an awful little brat that by the end I just wanted to see turned into pan-fried takoyaki. You were right to leave us. Not us. You! You're the problem, Deep! You see, unlike Ariel or Nemo, Deep isn't particularly likeable and is a surprisingly inconsiderate, self-absorbed, crude jerk, fobbing off his friends regularly for making mischief, scaring his friends for laughs, mocking his friends as they starve, and setting off nuclear missiles? What? Okay, I, I wasn't expecting that. It turns out Deep is the villain in this. He was the one to get his colony encased in lava. Probably the biggest plus to the movie is the backgrounds, which I found really interesting, varied, and pretty. We're shown a deeply expanded coral reef years after our cities are flooded, and despite it feeling too creepy and dark for kids, I find this aspect really interesting. Probably my favourite character is the eel, Mora, who has this neat sort of conflict going on between her instincts to kill and her desire for friendship, and it actually made for a much more interesting, fleshed out character to me. But I will say, I admire the tenacity of the concept here. A post-apocalyptic story about an obnoxious octopus, a singing diva shrimp, an annoying blowfish, and an eel that is constantly fighting the urge to eat the heroes, stopping their colony from dying in a slowly collapsing lava pit with the help of an elderly whale named Nathan. While also stopping a space launch program to Mars. I mean, on paper, that sounds pretty awesome. I actually think Deep may become one of those so bad it's good animated movies that gets a cult following in 10 years. For the fourth worst, Resident Evil Vendetta. Imagine trying to make a movie about a zombie shooter arcade game series by Capcom. I don't know about you, but when I hit the arcade, I never unholstered my plastic gun expecting a great cinematic masterpiece of storytelling. So how do you make a compelling story about our plastic gun characters? Well, you don't. And some of these scenes just don't make any sense. <laughs> I never dreamed that I would climb over the moon in ecstasy. I'd say he's happy to be alive, but, well, he's dead. So I, I guess he's happy to be undead? Good for him. He's making the most of it. Good morning! Look at the sun! Uh, anyway, we pretty much just end up with a generic zombie apocalypse movie, crossed with a silent let's play of the latest Resident Evil arcade game, with way too many cutscenes. Admittedly though, when we do get an action scene, they can be downright awesome to watch. While it's still on the cusp of the uncanny valley, some of this motion capture obviously took a lot of time and effort. The movie takes place in the Resident Evil game world, somewhere between 6 and 7. And that probably won't surprise you, because the movie does feel like it's trying to be a video game. The long monologues, the characters often slow and exaggerated movements, even the overly dramatic, hammy backstory. Where are you going with this? I'm redoing the wedding. Even the way the camera moves feels like it's straight out of a first-person shooter. Our story is the evil lunatic Glenn Arias plans to release the A-Virus on New York City and reset the world by turning everyone into zombies. And it's up to our counter-terrorism, gun-toting friend Chris Redfield to put a stop to him. Who's the bad guy here? Arius, and it's our mission to bring his ass down. Your mission, not mine. God damn it, Leon! Stop! 
Our villain Glenn's backstory just felt forced and unoriginal to me. I prefer anything more creative than the same old redundant revenge on the government for killing his friends and family theme. The sad part about Arius is that he's actually the most developed character in the film. Our actual heroes don't feel much different from the characters who shoot endlessly into the game's zombie-filled mansions. Mostly just there to be action heroes and fill space, but the animation at times is actually really stunning and immersive. I really do feel like I'm in the battle during some of these scenes. I feel like if Vendetta was a first person shooter, it'd be awesome. It has everything it needs, with epic boss music, fast paced action, and realistically moving zombies to shoot down. Someone ought to make a game out of this movie. Good morning! Look at the sun! And for the third worst of 2017, the Jungle Bunch. France has brought us many amazing contributions over the centuries. The Refrigerator, the Metric System, Existentialism, even Canning. But the Jungle Bunch is definitely not one of their crowning contributions to humanity. It's good versus evil. The super band of a penguin, a gorilla, and a fish by the evil koala named Eagle. Finally, I'll be able to destroy the jungle. Who has exploding mushrooms. Sure, why not? This almost feels like a weird mushing together of completely randomized animals and objects and just going with it, regardless of how little sense it makes. Just put these random animals and objects in a good versus evil plot and it's bound to entertain the under six. And the soundtrack can only be described as orchestrated yet somehow still campy and generic elevator music. With the exception of Natasha the Lion and maybe Maurice the Penguin, the protagonists here just have no character. I honestly know nothing about the rest of the animals except that I'm supposed to root for them and that they want to, you know, beat the evil koala. And speaking of the villain Igor, he has no distinguishable personality beyond being evil. What is his actual motivation? Apparently that's none of our business. But what I do like about the Jungle Bunch is I can really feel the French cultural influence here on the animation. And the tropical jungle setting is among my favorite movie settings of all time. And the lush bright colors of the tropical setting really shine on this palette. It started with this, look! <gasps> Apply this three times a day for a week, it'll clear right up. Oh, thank you, Jungle Bunch. And the second worst of 2017 is... Whoa, check out this CG. Oh, is that Big Boss? Is this finally the movie I've been waiting for? Metal Gear Solid the movie? Real troopers don't <laughs> celebrate Air Day. Real troopers don't need air. <laughs> No, wait, no, it's just another super boring cliche sci-fi movie that looks like every other sci-fi movie for the past 20 years. No, I wanted a Metal Gear Solid movie. Starship Troopers, Traitors of Mars. So our hero is Colonel, excuse me, I mean Colonel Rico, who would be so much more interesting if he was Solid Snake. Uh, okay, I'll stop, sorry. Anyway, Colonel Rico is working with a bunch of new recruits on the Mars satellite station, but giant alien bugs are gonna take them out in their next attack. Ooh, spooky alien bugs. I've certainly never seen that before in the last 30 years? Jeepers. So my biggest issue with this movie, the voice acting sounds like a bunch of teenage Call of Duty trolls. Geo, uh, Camacho. We'll locate the target colony's entrance, sir. Uh, 101. We give them the gas. Kills bugs, but don't hurt us. Baba. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, that's me. <laughs> and the story is about as cliche to boot. Even the trailer, which is meant to sell me on the film, has all the vocal substance of a wailing goat. There's a good day to die. This feels like Hero's Duty from Wreck-It Ralph got its own film, only in a desert and dim-witted enough to take itself seriously. All I could think about in any scene with the giant killer bugs was how much they reminded me of Cybugs. And all I could think of any scene with Colonel Rico's squadron was how they'd fit in with Sergeant Calhoun and her team. In the climax scene, the bugs are even working their way to the top of a tower like Ralph did. In fact, gunshots and gruff soldiers seem to be the only thing that keep this film moving. The big plus to this one is probably pretty obvious. It's gorgeous to look at. Unlike Deep, it has computer graphics animation that doesn't feel too uncanny, yet still feels realistic. That in itself is a great achievement. So why waste all that animation budget on this sad script and second-rate dialogue? However, Traitor of Mars is actually the third in a series of films based on the novel. So maybe it does have its fans out there, and I've missed a lot of character development in previous movies. If you enjoy it, more power to you. And before we get to number one, just a quick dishonorable mention. The Emoji Movie. 
At this point, it probably goes without saying that this is easily one of the worst films of 2017. However, I've already spoken about it a lot in the past, so I didn't include it here. You've probably already heard it ripped to pieces in the past by someone else. Anyway, on to number one. And the number one worst animated movie of 2017 is... Monster Family. Gee, I wonder what this movie is trying to cash in on. Hotel Transylvania? No, it can't be. That film had a great deal of charm and care put into each scene and character, and a lot of polish to the timing and writing. This, on the other hand, is horrible, awkward, and downright excruciating to watch. It's been a while since I felt both bored and insulted enough by a movie to consider it something I really do hate, but I just despise this movie. It is aggressively awful. So where do we begin with this barrel-scraping sad excuse for a family film? To start with, this teacher imitates perfectly my emotional state and interest watching this movie, and I suspect the director and voice actors were just as invested. At every turn there is another awkward, uncomfortable, or just outright distressing scene. And if the movie can't make you squirm, it'll just bore you till you're comatose. So we open with three minutes of nothing happening but the piano playing, from annoying little bat gremlins that has nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. But trust me, we're currently seeing the best part, because we don't have to watch the movie's sad, unfortunate, awkward, sometimes abusive, utterly miserable family. Don't be so scared all the time. Hey, I'm not scared. If you stood up for yourself, you wouldn't get beaten Ow! up. We are then introduced to some of the most obnoxious and overused family cliches in the history of film. First, we have Faye, an obnoxious, disinterested teenage girl who insults her family at every turn and cares only about boys. Personally, I found Faye the most awful character in the entire movie, despite the very stiff competition. Faye, are you okay, sweetie? Don't you dare, sweetie me! This is all your fault! <laughs> then we have Max, the nervous geek who lacks self-confidence and is bullied at school for a yada yada yada. Then we have Frank, the zombie-like, excessively flatulent husband who is working so hard that he can't spend time with his family. In fact, farting seems to be his defining feature. Ooh. Oh, that's dad. And Emma, the overworked wife who is trying vainly to keep this disaster of a family afloat. I hate that my daughter does nothing but insult me. And I hate that my kids are always fighting. Trust me, Mrs. Wishbone, the audience is squirming right along with you. 99 out of 100 scenes just don't work and create that dead, uncomfortable, awkward silence in the theater, often being ugly, nasty, or gross rather than comedic. <laughs> like his dad having excessive flatulence to the point that his office workers detest him. Sorry, guys. Oh, come on, Frank! Or the family embarrassing themselves or hating their mum when she tries to bring them together for a family outing. Or the massage therapist appearing to have hanged herself. Charming. It's not that I mind some dark or crude humour, but the presentation of all these jokes just makes me cringe. When I wear a miniskirt, I'm mm. embarrassing. No, then you're not embarrassing. I'm not. You're just really sad. And I really can't overstate enough how horrible this family dynamic is to watch. There's even a good 10 to 20 second scene of just watching Faye the sister straight up punch and kick her little brother, eventually throwing him down the stairs. And to me anyway, that's not a family movie. That's a police footage report. And even the positive messages they're trying to send are more overused than the characters. It doesn't matter if people look at me and see an ugly mummy. I know who I am under all these bandages. Gee, I've never heard that before. What a revolutionary concept. And what's the story for the Wishbones? Why, they've been turned into monsters, by a witch with no voice acting investment whatsoever. I'm so very unhappy you are. And every moment after with them feels gimmicky, forced, and made me actually miss the mediocre Adams Family movie. But most of all, it made me miss my favorite monster films, the Hotel Transylvania series, which said about a million times more about prejudice, life decisions, and family conflict in the same runtime. Monster Family is not just terrible, it's insultingly terrible. It was an almost unanimous box office bomb, and viewers as well seem to hate it almost as much as the critics. Barely managing a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, it is easily the worst animated cinematic release of 2017. <laughs> 
And as I mentioned, thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon provides innovative headphone designs at a price that doesn't break the bank. They're aiming to create the next wave in wireless audio technology. Recently indoors during my workout, I've been using their everyday E25 earbuds for chatting with Discord members on voice chat. Hi. It turns out the earbuds don't just give crisp music, but also have a microphone for conversations. And when I'm done, I've got four full charges in the carrying case, which is handy. I do about an hour of intense cardio per day, and these fit into my ears very well the whole way through. The everyday E25s are also very easily paired with my phone's Bluetooth. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of other premium wireless earbud brands, and I personally think they sound just as crisp. If you like, you can go to buyraycon.com slash phantomstrider to get 15% off your order. Anyway, even if 2017 had a lot of lousy films, I gotta say, many of them were very ambitious. And even if not every film may resonate with me, I always enjoy discussing them with you in retrospect and what I think we can learn from them. And I hope smaller studios do keep trying to express their story through animation, just like the ones we saw here. And feel free to let me know your own thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.